I'll call the special meeting to order June 22nd. It's uh, 535. And we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We, oh. Tenemos interpretación disponible al español por si alguien gusta escuchar la reunión en español. We have headsets for hearing impaired if you need them. Uh, board comments and correspondence. Seeing none, uh, let's go to um, announcements from closed session. Uh, we have nothing to report. Uh, public comments, non-agenda matters. I see none. Uh, consent agenda, we have nothing on the consent agenda. Public hearing of the Santa Barbara Unified School District 2015-16 fiscal year budget and components of ending fund balance. Dr. Cash. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, this is a required component in the change in the <coughs> Budget Act, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Jete, our Chief Business Officer. Thank you, Dr. Cash. So due to new, regu board regu or new regulations, the districts are required to report on the components of ending fund balance in excess of 3%. But before we do that, I would like to go briefly through the general fund that we will discuss in more detail tomorrow night's board meeting. So we're just going to briefly go across go through this. Unrestricted revenues are about 132 million. Combined is about 145 million. Our um, expenditures are about 108 million and our total expenditures are about 138 million. So if we go down a little more, we get to what we feel is the ending fund balance of 12 million, we're estimated ending fund balance for our adopted budget of 12 million dollars. And part of this 12 million dollars has a 6.7 million dollars of one-time funds that we will be talking about a little bit tomorrow. So we're going to go right into the components of ending fund balance. We have to designate our ending fund components of ending fund balance. So of the twelve million dollars, we have to have a three percent reserve, and any ex anything excess of three percent has to be some sort of explanation about why you have it and what you plan to do with it. So with that, Mr. Tedeschi. These are the categories which you've seen in the budget for the past couple of times and they have certain restrictions on them and more, some are more restricted than others. So let's just go right into the explanations of the fund one which is our general fund and our estimated actuals. Can you go over the definitions of the different options? Sure. We just went through those very quickly and anybody watching it wouldn't have seen them. Okay. Um, let me get back to those. So um, basically the non-spendable fund balances are that reflects the amounts that are not separate spendable in the in spendable form. So those would be more like um, oh gosh, I wasn't paper, food. Well, those usually aren't on there, but they would be like our stores, our prepaid expenditures, things that we really have no other, um, we can't do anything else with them. We prepaid expenditure or we, um, we um, have um, our stores balances in there. Restricted funds are just from the restricted side. They automatically fall in a category of that type and you can't spend them except by what the government tells you to spend them on. Our committed funds are probably the most restricted and those are the ones that we have definitely decided that we want to do certain things on and we put them in those buckets and that is board approved goes through all the process and only if I remember right only board can uncommit them. The assigned balance is that 
someone can designate them, which is what we did, and then the board says, you know, we give you the right to undesignate them and put them somewhere else. So what we did is we put them in assigned because there are certain things that we haven't agreed upon. So I, I assigned them in hopes that um, what we feel will um, help us with our components. So for example, if you go down a little bit further, um, and then the undesignated is what you're used to as being for this um, economic uncertainties or it just falls to ending fund balance, which is like we do whatever we want to do with them. So in Fund 01, we have on our first line for the estimated actuals deferred maintenance and we're assigning is to set aside $500,000 towards our deferred maintenance plan. We're hoping that our year ends up better than our um, as it usually does and we're hoping to have about $500,000 extra that we can put towards our deferred maintenance plan and we will make that um, contribution or assignment to that um, in our next year's budget so we're hoping to um, go th ask you to possibly do that for the year end um, and also we have we feel that we may have it, uh, ending, we may need to use for uh, 1.5 million for to cover any deficit spending we may do in 16, in 15, 16 for um, once we start spending that one-time funding, if we do spend it all at one time. For the 15, 16 adopted budget, um, I mentioned before, it's the one-time funds. We have, we're estimating approximately 6.7 million in one-time funds, but the total dollar amounts for per ADA have not come out from the state. And so uh, about 200,000 of them, uh, of those funds, we're planning to do some professional development this summer. So we needed to go ahead and um, already put those in the budget, but that's the only uh, funds that we have designated in that 6.7 million approximately. Um, the other assigned, oh, we've done that, sorry. Um, in, um, in our fund 17, we have in the past that we set aside $100,000 every year to um, replace our turf fields in San Marcos. If we get more fields, we will need to continue to put money away to replace those in a 10-year period. And um, we also, every year we put carts and trucks in there for replacement, the carts at the sites and um, other facilities, vehicles. And then for per board policy 3100, this assignment of four million is to serve towards that reserve amount and um, any other um, emergencies that the board may feel that to use the funds for. So here's like a summary of the components of ending fund balance and you can see that what I just spoke about is on these designated um, components, uh, mostly under assigned, but it's the board's discretion that they can put these funds, they can commit them more or they can leave them there and we can talk about them more throughout the year. So with that, you have any questions? We're going to bring forward a plan that mm -hmm. um, in relationship to the one-time money. Um, <coughs> Because it's one time, we, ha we want to make sure that um, we provide the board with multiple opportunities to uh, think as conservatively as possible because it will be here today and gone tomorrow. Um, we won't be bringing forward any proposal related to ongoing expenditures for one-time money. I have a question just on the, it came to mind, on the turf maintenance, do, are you able to like subtract out that you're not mowing a lawn and you're not, um, I mean, because that's artificial turf, correct? That's correct. So all the things that you're not doing because it's artificial turf versus that? Yeah, that this is just our annual 100000 so we're, if it, we're expecting it to be a million dollar project in 10 years, we'll have the money to replace it. Okay. So would you rather have it say artificial turf? Is that what you're saying? I think so, yeah. Okay. So it's more clear that what... On the 6.7 million, is that a, you say it's a one-time amount of money. Mm -hmm. 
Does it have to be spent in the one year? No. And does it have to be spent on new items or can it supplant existing things we pay for? It is totally discretionary. We and can do whatever we want with no it. There's no suggested categories? Well, they're talking about Common Core. You know, they'll always say, talk about Common Core. They, yeah, Common Core, Next Generation Science Standards, Professional Learning, Instructional Materials, Technology, Infrastructure for Technology. Um, and it's really designed to reimburse the district for mandated costs um, which have not been reimbursed to the district and there's about 30 some of those so a lot. Ms. Limon? Could it go as far as um, increasing one time without like the expectation that we would have to increase it at that level but increasing one time contributions to um, retirement? Our PERS? Well, that's an ongoing expense. Right. So if but we you're talking about your actuarial, our actuarial yes, study of 14 yes. million? Absolutely. Yeah, you bet. Yep. Or our deferred maintenance plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. those are the kinds of things you'll see that will make suggestions on where we think it should go. We'll talk about the budget tomorrow night, but <clears throat> I noticed in the outlying years, um, mm -hmm. There are cuts spelled out. Yes, and already the those those were based on um, well May revise with a very low gap exp um, percentage. If you look in the we'll go over this tomorrow, but it was like 12 percent, and then 18 percent for I believe 17 18. But now those are already up to 35 percent in those out years. And for 15-16, it went from 53% gap funding to 51 within, you know, the week that we got the budget done. The week, yes. And explain, yeah. explain what that means. So the gap funding is we have our target amount and we have our um, target amount that we're supposed to get to in 2021. And so we have a pers we have a um, the floor what they call the floor and the target. So the the in between part is called our gap funding. So they're f funding 53 percent of that gap funding. That's what's left because every year the gap funding goes into the floor. So the floor grows and the target gets closer to being reached. So that's what the gap funding is for. So it's a percentage each year of what is the remaining gap. So it, the gap gets smaller, but the percentage is staying fairly large throughout these two, next two couple years, whereas a week ago it was in the 12%, now it's in the 35%. Well, one of the other issues will be obviously Prop 30, which is scheduled to sunset in right. 2018. So if in fact no other revenue source is identified or approved by the voters, then the sunsetting of Prop 13, which is Prop anywhere... 30. Prop 30, excuse me. And parcel taxes. <laughs> is anywhere from 80 to $14 billion in, in 2015. That's a lot of money from in revenue that will directly impact the revenue that our district gets. And that's why any decisions we make in relationship to the one-time money have to be very carefully thought mm -hmm. about. Well, that's my wonder. If, if we know that we're going to have to cut $3 million as an estimate in two years from now, can we start saving for that eventuality now by spending less. Yes. That's what our that's what the board can assign that components of ending fund balance to help relieve that. But as so I said, we don't said, have to have 6 million 7 in new programs. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Okay. We don't want no. new we don't we're want not, anything yeah. ongoing. We're not we're we not going to be recommending well, ongoing anything except well, for maybe maintenance. Well, I'm not even thinking ongoing. It's just can we not spend it? Yes. Figure out a way yes. to not spend it. In other words, um, yes. Yeah. Any other questions? I look forward to budget tomorrow night. Okay, well, we'll be here. Okay. Thank you. Were there any pu public comments on this issue? No. Okay, see you tomorrow night. Thank Close you. This meeting. <laughs>